Hello there, this is River Braun with CatamaranSite.com, and I am here with Michael Bryant, previous owner of Eloise, Prout 30 through Quest, webmaster of the Prout Owners Association, uh, owner of GentleSailing.com on his YouTube channel, as well as author of multiple guides on sailing in Europe. Michael, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your adventures on Eloise? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Eloise was, uh, was, I'd wanted to have a catamaran for years and years and years, and it just never, it just never happened. And then um, I got back from a circumnavigation. My wife was not well. She didn't want to bounce about, and she had liked catamarans that she had seen. Uh, what she actually liked were 50 foot and 60 foot catamarans. <laughs> and what I was offering was, I think, um, what was Eloise? She was 30 foot, 32 foot, so the, something of that, um, something of that order. Uh, so um, Monique was mildly disappointed, but um, she came with me over. I, I went over, had a look at it, bought it, um, did a little bit of work doing it up, and then um, took. My wife across to um, Portsmouth and picked her up there and had her put in the water and sailed her down to La Rochelle in France, which is a distance of about five or six hundred miles if it's by sea. But I cheated and took her across to Dieppe in France, which is a um, 60 mile passage, 70 mile passage across the English Channel. Um, because the boat hadn't sailed for three or four or five years, um, the bouncing about in the channel swirled around the fuel tank, and halfway across, um, the engine stopped altogether. And of course, because it was a boat I'd only just bought, yeah, I had some tools on board. I didn't have a clean filter. I didn't have anything at all. So I ended up um, sailing my uh, brand new to me um, catamaran into Dieppe under sail. And Dieppe is a ferry port. It's a port where um, cross channel ferries go into and you have to ask permissions on it. But it was fine. I mean, so easy to sail. I mean, really, um, really surprised me. I'd never sold a catamaran before that trip, really. And um, yeah, uh, first one is here. I, I couldn't find the entrance, so I actually had to tack out um, away from the beach in order to find the entrance into Dieppe Port. Got into Dieppe Port, called up the marina and said, hey guys, got no engine, how about giving me a tow to the berth? And they came out, they gave me a tow. And it was great. And parked up there and put a new, well, no, took the stainless steel fuel tank out of her, had it cleaned out, um, had the holes which had then developed, welded up, and took her around to a place called San Valerie sur Somme, which is indeed um, a port for the Somme where the 1418 war mainly happened. And from there, took her down through the French canals to the Mediterranean. Oh, fantastic. Um, you mentioned your wife not wanting to bounce about, and that's a perfectly uh, reasonable request. How comfortable is the was the Prout 33 for you? They say, I mean, it is a very different movement from a monohull. So having sailed um, 30, 40,000 miles in monohulls, um, walking into a smaller catamaran was a big change. On a on a reach, uh, um, downwind, they are just so gentle and so comfortable, it's lovely. Going to windward, I have to say, um, the movement tends to be a bit jerky, but that, that could be particular to that sort of catamaran. I, I'm not experienced enough, that I haven't owned, I haven't sailed really any other, I sailed a Cadillac once. I sailed a Cadillac once with Tom Lack, who actually um, built them, designed and built them. Um, Going to Winwood, they are, they have got a bit more bounce on them than a monohull, and I think that's partly because they don't, they don't go down in the water so much. I suspect that's the reason for the bounce, but there's nothing to worry about. It's nothing, um, it's nothing offensive. It's just different from a monohull. Sure. Uh, what about heavy weather? Did you encounter any heavy weather while you were sailing? Yeah, I, I, I make it a practice to avoid heavy weather as much as possible. Um, 
I didn't really, during the time I owned um, Eloise, and I sold her a lot out of La Rochelle in France, um, I didn't encounter anything much above a sort of six, I don't think, and then I just reefed down and, you know, that was fine. I, I was never out there in a gale or whatever. No, she was fine. I, she never gave me any worries. And I was never concerned about being out in bad weather. I, I, I had a good friend in the Caribbean who had a Prout 37, which was one of the reasons I had, lovely Prout, absolutely beautiful boat, um, which I um, was on board in Martinique and various other places. And he was a, he was a German guy. Um, He'd sold her, he sold her from um, Prouts in England to uh, down to the Mediterranean and then across to the Caribbean. And he never had, he said to me, he never had a moment's doubt about it. He'd been out in some heavy weather in her and he had never had a moment's worry. Um, they were good. So, and he was a good sailor. So um, I, his confidence in his Prout 37 gave me my confidence in my Prout. Is it the 32? Uh, Eloise, you probably know more than me. Yeah, something like that, something of that order. Yeah, of course. Do you have no? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I talked over you. No, that was. I was just saying she's a proud quest. So anyone who knows about Prout will know what she is. Um, any uh, critiques of the Prout 33 quest? Critiques. So, uh, how, how, how do you mean? Um, uh, any anything that you would have changed or actually did change uh, about the the boat when you owned her? No, I mean, um, I oh, yes, I put in a high chair. Uh, I put in a stool behind the wheel. I mean, the, you've got this little wheel, which of course is very small compared to you know a huge great monohull wheel. So uh, you've got this little wheel, and you're sitting there with this little wheel because the rudders are not very far behind you. And I found over a long distance I didn't like standing up, so I put in a um, so I put in a high chair. Um, I bought a uh, um, stainless steel captain's chair on the internet and the next time I had a laid up um, you know, it was just a matter of so simple to fit backing plate underneath and a few bolts and really comfortable really nice one foot on the side other foot there and the gear levers down there oh and the lever for swinging the outboard engine round is right in front of you excellent so yeah um, you certainly need to get the high chair I think if you're going to um, go very far the radar, um, I moved below uh, a little bit along the port side thing. So, that, in fact, from my high carrier, I could just lean down, look through the um, look through the hatch, and I could see the radar. So, yeah, um, those are the main things. I also redid the headlinings, but I think everybody with older boats, whether they're Prouts or Moody's or Westerlies or even American boats, I'm sure, of that era, you... Uh, end up redoing the headlinings. But it's easy on a catamaran because they're such big flat distances, very few curves. Nice. Um, how, did, uh, how did she handle on the canals? Was it, uh, was it tight at times? Uh, did you have any problems with maneuverability? Yes, just before you, just before you called me, I got my um, French Canal route to the Mediterranean book out uh, to check it and the beam in the main canals, and that's in the locks, of course, the maximum beam is five meters. And I can't remember what the quest was, but I think it was something like four meters 50, four meters 30, that sort of size. And when you add the fenders on either side, and most people, if they're sensible, have got a, um, a scaffolding board running outside the fenders, you're going into those locks with maybe only a foot, foot and a half clearance on either side. And to get in them, you have to line up at absolute right angles. And the only place there is any current in a French canal is just outside the lock gates. Because the locks, um, if you're coming, uh, if you're going up a level, the top lock is entering, um, the water's coming into the, uh, into the, lock, bay, the lock basin bit, and it's coming out around the entrance, and vice versa if you're going up. 
the levels are changing. So you line yourself up, you get a little bit way back, you line up absolutely 100% with the full length of your boat, so it's straight on into that canal lock. And as you get there, the current sweeps you to one side or the other side. Um, in the Prout, I was able to do it without having another breakdown and without actually dinging it ever. Um, I did meet another couple in a rather larger catamaran one time who were in tears because it was just, you know, if you're on the limit of getting in there, you know, and you only got a few inches either side, probably a catamaran of that size shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing it. They were in tears because they were dinging it. Yeah. Uh, so, any ad advice about uh, navigating the canals in a in a catamaran? Aside from don't get a, don't put a big one in there. <laughs> no, I mean they they they're brilliant because you can get right alongside. I mean, one of the problems with a monohull in the French canals is that the, because of the key, it isn't that deep alongside the banks. You know, the canals are um, they're not sort of concreted sides. They've got soft. Um, they've got soft, um, soft canal sides. It's uh, the towpaths. There's not sort of stonework. It, it, it's quite soft. So the centre of the canal is deep. The centre of the canal is, you know, uh, oh, uh, one five foot nine, one point eight meters. Um, uh, so in a monohull, that's absolutely fine. But once you go to park up for the night and you go alongside some leafy canal side and all the rest of it, you can't get your monohull in. But the catamaran. She slides right in there, alongside the bank, very easy to drive in a couple of stakes um, into the bank and tie up, put the plank on, and walk short. So they are perfect. They are absolutely perfect for parking. Awesome. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, gentle sailing? Gentlesailing.com. Um, it's a YouTube channel. I started, uh, now why did I start it? I had a very good reason for starting it. And I can't remember what it was. I had a load of videos. That I, shot. I did a circuit navigation. So I shot a lot of film on um, digital, uh, which um, sold very well with sort of West Marine and Defenders and so on. And uh, But that was also about 10 or 15 years ago. And I was, uh, uh, I was, uh, was I in lockdown? Was it, was it the virus? I can't remember. It was some reason like that. I looked at all these films and went, I can't, because they stopped selling after a while, um, because they're, you know, all films have it. And I thought, well, I don't know. I think I'll put them up on, I'm not making money out of these. So I think I'll, I think I'll put them up on YouTube for free. So I just, I then discovered that, um, how to do it. I discovered that you start a YouTube channel. Um, I started one called Michael Bryant and I thought, well, that's not very good. Uh, so I made a subsidiary channel called um, Gentle Sailing and started putting all these old films up on there uh, with a bit of conversion, a bit of editing and so on. And, and they were, you know, they were quite successful. People seemed to enjoy them. People seemed to like them. And then this year, um, I went, they were never getting mega views. They were never going viral. Uh, in, in, <laughs> they weren't even getting sick. Um, so this year, I went off sailing down the French coast, down the Normandy coast, between the two um, um, COVID um, lockdown incidents. And I started uh, a bit of a load of sports cameras, which I didn't have before, but, you know, those tiny little go cameras, plastered them all over my boat and started making videos. And um, I've been doing, uh, I did a couple of videos about getting the boat back from um, England to France during the first lockdown, which was quite an experience because the French didn't want to let me in. Um, and then uh, I've done videos about all of the Normandy coast, um, from Boulogne to Cherbourg, uh, which I shot between the two lockdown periods on my go cameras, and they've been doing very well indeed. They've been doing very well. Um, I'm really pleased about those. It's just, it's just like pilot. It's just like having a pilot book. I mean, I do it visually and um, show you how to get into the ports, these little French ports, which for you, 
which is a bit the same as um, the Intercostal Waterway, which I sailed up. And I should have had a catamaran for the Intercostal Waterway because it would have been perfect. Sure, definitely. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Um, again, I'm uh, River Braun with Catamaran Site. Uh, you can see more about uh, Michael Bryant's uh, work on gentle sailing on his YouTube channel and um, also uh, on catamaransite.com for more information on how to uh, uh, make your next catamaran purchase. Thank you so yep. much, Michael.